Hey everyone, it's Professor Primton. In this video, we're going to finish up our discussion on combining functions. So in the previous video, we talked about how to find the domain of a function and also how to combine functions using the algebra functions, including the sum, the difference, the product, and the quotient of two functions. In this video, we're going to talk about how to find the composition of functions and also its domain, how to decompose a composite function into an inner and outer function, and also to solve applications involving composite functions. So let's talk about composition of functions. Now we're going to consider a very important way of combining two functions, which is called substitution, which will form a composite function. So let's suppose we have two functions, f of x is the square root of x, and another function is g of x is x squared plus 1. These are two functions, and we're going to take these two functions and combine them in a certain way, using substitution, to form a new function, and that's going to be called a composite function. So h of x, this new function, is going to be defined this way. f is called the outside function and g of x is called the inside function because it looks like you're substituting g of x into the function f of x. So it's f of g of x. That's how it's read. And it is this new function, square root of x squared plus 1. So let's see how this is formed. So the function g is acting on x first because that's the inside function. So you input an x value into this function g, and g can be a function that's described in terms of a verbal description, a table of values, a graph, or even a formula. It will output x squared plus 1. So you input an x value, the function g of x will output x squared plus 1, so it looks like g of x is the function x squared plus 1 in terms of a formula. And now the outside function is f. f will now act on the output value of g. So we're going to input x squared plus 1 into the function f of x, the outside function, and this function f of x will output the square root of x squared plus 1. And so it looks like the function f of x is the square root of x, because you input x squared plus 1, and the function f of x will output the square root of x squared plus 1. So it takes whatever the input is, and it takes the square root of that input. So in general, if you're given two functions, f of x and g of x, you start off with a value of x, that's the input value. You find out the domain of the function g of x, so you can input values of x into the function g of x, and you find its output value g of x. And then you input g of x, as an input value into your function f of x. So this g of x must be in the domain of the function f of x, otherwise you can't input it into the function to get an output value. Then you calculate f of g of x, and that is called a composite function, which is exactly what we just did in the last problem. You have h of x, which was defined to be this function, f, and then you substitute g of x into f, because g of x is the inside function, and f is the outside function. This is called a composite function, and it's obtained by substituting one function into the other. The inner function, g of x, is substituted into the outer function, f of x. And this operation, the substitution of the inner function into the outer function, is called composition. And so the composition, or the composite function, of f of x and g of x is denoted this way. You have h of x, this new function, the composite function, is defined as the composition of f and g, and so the order does matter here, because f is first, g is second, after this composition symbol, which is a little tiny circle between the two functions. It's not to be confused with multiplication. The f is the outside function, g is the inside function, because it's defined this way, f of g of x. So the order that f composed with g is written, that's the order of the composition. So notice that g of x is the inside function, and f is the outside function. So you input x into g first, and then you get your output. That output is now input into the function f, the outer function, to get f of g of x. So the definition of composition of functions. If you're given two functions, f and g, the composite function, f composed with g of x, so that's the function's name, f composed with g, it's called the composition of f of x and g of x, and it's defined as f is the outside function, because that's the function that comes first, and it's composed with g, and g is the inside function. Now, if you want to talk about the domain of this composite function, because it is a function, it will have a domain as well, what x values can you plug in into this composite function and get an output value? Well, it's the set of all x values that's in the domain of g of x, such that the g of x, the output from the function g, is also in the domain of your outer function. You need to have the x values to be defined for both g of x and f of g of x. So this diagram gives you an idea of what does that mean to be in the composition's domain. So let's say you have a composition of functions. Notice that g is the inside function and f is the outside function because it's f composed with g. 
So g acts on x first. So you input an x value into the function g. So this is the domain of g of x, the set of all input values. And g of x is the inner function. You output g of x, which is a y value. So that is in the range of g of x. But if you're actually going to now input g of x into the outer function f, g of x needs to be in the domain of f as well. And so g of x is in the domain of f of x. And so then f of x will take this g of x and output f of g of x, which is the output value for the composition. And so this is the range of the function f. So the domain of g, you need to have an x value that goes into g of x, the range of g. And then this g of x needs to be inputted into f, so it must be in the domain of f. And then you output f of g of x, which is in the range of the composition. So what all this means is that if you want to calculate a composition of functions, the order is very important here. The variable x is input into your inner function first, the function g of x in this case. And then the output, g of x, is now substituted into the outer function, which is f. So keep in mind, if you have the function g composed with f, the functions are written in a different order. So g would be the outside function, and f is the inside function. So that means the function f is acting on x first, because f is the inner function. You get your output value f of x, and then f of x is substituted into the outer function, g of x in this case. So be very careful about what is the inside and what's the outside function, because that determines which function is substituted into the other function to find out the composite function. All right, so let's now talk about how to find the composition of functions. So example two, we're going to find the composition of functions. Suppose that f of x is this function, 2x plus 3, so that's a linear function, because x is raised to the first power. And then you have a function g of x, which is x squared subtract 2x. That's a quadratic function, because the highest power is 2 on the variable x. Determine each of the following composite functions, and then also find out the domain of the composite function. So number one, we're going to find the composition of functions, or the composite function, f composed with g of x. And so the order is important. f is the outside function, g is the inside function, because it's written in this order. So it's f of g of x is what we're trying to find. That means g of x is going to be substituted into the outer function f of x. So g of x we know. g of x was x squared subtract 2x. So let's take x squared subtract 2x and substitute it into f of x. And so f of x squared subtract 2x, that's where g of x is replaced with x squared minus 2x. And now it's function notation. We know what the function f is. It takes 2 times the input value and then adds 3. So that would be f of x squared minus 2x would be 2 times the input value is g of x, the function g of x, x squared subtract 2x, and then the function f will add 3. And so it's 2 times the quantity, x squared to track 2x, then add 3. So we can simplify this function. Distribute the 2 through the set of parentheses. You'll get 2x squared, subtract so 4x, and then you'll have plus 3. This is a new function. This is called the composite function. It's f composed with g, or f of g of x. And it's obtained by taking the function g, the inner function, and substituting it into the outer function f. So now let's find out the domain of this composite function. Notice that you have to be in the domain of g first, because the g is the inside function. So notice that g of x is a quadratic function. You can substitute in any x value as an input, and you will obtain an output value. So the domain of g of x is the set of all real numbers, or written in interval notation, it would be negative infinity to infinity. So now let's think about the domain of the outer function. The domain of the outer function, outer function was f of x. So let's think about the domain of f of x. It's a linear function. So the domain of a linear function, again, you are never dividing by 0 if you substitute an x value, and you're never taking the even root of a negative number. So the values will never be undefined for any input value that you plug in. And so the domain of f of x is also the set of all real numbers, or negative infinity to infinity in interval notation. So since there are no x values that need to be excluded from f of x or g of x, then the domain of the composite function, f composed with g, is also the set of all real numbers, or in interval notation, it would be negative infinity to infinity. That's the domain of this function, f of g of x, which is 2x squared subtract 4x plus 3. So now number two, let's reverse the order of the composition of functions. Let's say g is composed with f this time. And so the order is important, as we talked about earlier. g this time will be the outer function, and f is the inside function. So x is going to be plugged into the function f first. Then you get an output value, f of x. 
and then you take f of x and you plug it into your outside function g. And so let's take f of x. We know what f of x was. It was 2x plus 3, that linear function. So now let's take 2x plus 3 and substitute it into the outer function, which in this case is g. So you'll have g of x. g of x took the input value and then squared. So it would be 2x plus 3 and then square the input. And then the g of x also subtracted 2 times the input value. So subtract 2 times the input value in this case is 2x plus 3. And so now let's simplify the function. We have 2x plus 3, that's all squared. So that's 2x plus 3 times 2x plus 3. So we have to use the FOIL method to simplify that multiplication problem. So you have 2x times 2x, that's 4x squared. 2x times 3 will give you 6x. 3 times 2x will also give you 6x. And 3 times 3 will give you 9. And then we'll also have negative 4x and minus 6 from distributing the negative 2 through the set of parentheses. And so there are a couple like terms to combine. We have 4x squared. You have 12x minus 4x, that's 8x. And then the constant term is 9 subtract 6 or 3. So notice that this is a different composite function. This is 4x squared plus 8x plus 3. That's g of f of x, or g composed with f of x. That's a different function than we had before in the last problem because the function f composed with g, it was 2x squared minus 4x plus 3. It's an entirely different function because you swapped the inside and the outside function f of x with g of x and g of x with f of x. So in general, if you reverse the inner and the outer function in your composite function, expect different answers for your composite function. So now let's find out the domain of this function g composed with f, or g of f of x. So again, notice that the inside function is f of x. Let's find out its domain first. The domain of f of x, well, we did that in the last problem. The domain is the set of all real numbers because it was a linear function. There are no division by zero, and there are no even roots of, of a negative number possible. So you'll have negative infinity to infinity as the domain of f of x. The domain of the outside function was also the set of all real numbers, or negative infinity to infinity, because g of x was a quadratic function. Again, no division by zero, and no even roots of negative numbers possible. So the domain of g is the set of all real numbers. So again, since you, there are no x values that you need to throw out or exclude from the domain of the inside function, and there are no input values that you have to exclude from the domain of the outside function, in this case was g of x, the domain of g composed with f, is a set of all real numbers, or in interval notation, negative infinity to infinity. Now before we get to the next example, we actually find the composition of different types of functions besides linear and quadratic functions, and also find its domain. We need to talk about how do you find the domain of a composite function, where you have to actually exclude x values or input values from an inner function or an outer function. So to find the domain of a composite function, in this case we're going to find out how do you do it for f composed with g, where g is the inside function and f is the outside function, you need to actually do a couple steps. So step number one, you need to determine the domain of the inside function, which in this case is g. So find out the domain of g of x. If there are any x values that are not in the domain of g, then they're also not in the domain of the composition. So if you have an x value that does not produce a y value for the function g of x, which is the inside function, you can't go any further with the composition of functions because you don't have an input value. It doesn't exist from the function g of x. And so those x values need to be excluded from the composite function's domain as well. Step two, determine the domain of the outside function, in this case is f of x. If there are any x values where g of x is not in the domain of f, then that means that they're also not in the domain of the composite function. So what this means is that you need to find any x values that you input into the function g and g of x is the output value for the function g whenever you input x, if this g of x cannot be input into the outside function, then you can't find the composition of that x originally. And so those x values also have to be excluded from the domain of the composite function because f of g of x must also be defined. So x must be defined whenever you calculate g of x, and g of x needs to be able to be plugged into the outside function f as well to get a new y value. So there are a couple steps to find out the domain of a composite function. We're going to talk about each of these in the next example. All right, example three, finding the composition of functions. This time we'll have two different functions, f of x and g of x. f of x is this function. It's a rational function because it's a fraction of two functions. f of x is one divided by x plus four, and g of x is also a rational function. It's 4 divided by the quantity x attract 2. Determine each of the following composite functions, and then also the domain of the composite function. So number one, we're going to find the composite function f composed with g, or that is f of g of x. 
So g of x is the inside function or the inner function, and f is the outside function. Well, the composition is formed by taking g of x, the inside function, and substituting in the entire function into the outer function f. So that would be f of g of x was 4 divided by x minus 2, so substitute 4 divided by x minus 2 into the function f. And so now that means that would have 1 divided by x is the input value for f. So that means it would be g of x now, so 4 divided by x minus 2 is the input value, then plus 4 in the denominator. So notice that if you want to simplify this function, you need to get common denominators in the denominator of this larger fraction. The least common denominator is x attract 2, so that means you need to rewrite 4, so it also has a common denominator of x attract 2, and so that would be 4 plus, notice that the 4 is missing the entire denominator, so multiply it by x minus 2, the LCD, and then the entire fraction is over x minus 2, the LCD. And so now you can simplify in the denominator of the larger fraction. You have 4 plus 4 times x minus 2, the 4 can be distributed to get 4x minus 8, so 4 plus 4x subtract 8, that's the fraction in the denominator of the larger fraction. And so if you simplify, you'll have 1 in the numerator of the larger fraction divided by 4x subtract 4, and then that part is divided by x subtract 2, which was the LCD. And so now how do you divide fractions? It's 1 divided by this fraction, 4x minus 4, all divided by x minus 2. Well, you multiply by the reciprocal. Well, that would be x subtract 2 divided by 4x minus 4, and then you multiply by 1. So that will not change the function at all. So it will stay x attract 2 in the numerator, but notice that there's a 4 in the denominator that you can factor out, and you'll have 4 times x minus 1 in the denominator. You want to be able to factor both the numerator and denominator to simplify the function to see if there are any common factors. In this case, there are no common factors. You have x attract 2 is a factor in the numerator, and x minus 1 is a factor in the denominator. There are no common factors for this function, so it's completely simplified now. That is the composite function, f composed with g, where g is the inside function and f is the outside function. So now let's talk about how do you find the domain of the composite function f composed with g. Well, there are a couple steps. Step one, we find out the domain of the inside function. Well, in this case, g of x was the inside function. What's the domain of g? Well, I notice that I cannot substitute in x equals 2 because that would make the function undefined or I will not actually have an output value when x equals 2. So x minus 2 cannot be 0, so that means x cannot be 2. So the domain of g of x is the set of all real numbers except for x equals 2. So negative infinity to 2, union 2 to infinity using interval notation. So what that means is that if you want to find out the domain of the composite function, that means x cannot be 2, because if you plug 2 in for g of x, the inside function, g of 2 doesn't exist which means f of g of 2 also doesn't exist for the composite function. Now the second step. The second step said find out the domain of the outside function. So the domain of the outside function, we know that f of x is the outside function, and it was 1 divided by x plus 4. I can't substitute in x equals negative 4 because that would make the denominator 0, which will make the y value undefined. So x plus 4 cannot be 0, the denominator. x cannot be negative 4. So what that means is that I'm not throwing negative 4 out from the domain of the composite function because negative 4 was okay for the inside function, g of x. I need to find out what x values will make g of x negative 4. So let's find out where is g of x not equal to negative 4. So you have an equation to solve now. You have g of x was 4 divided by x minus 2. We'll find out what x values will make it equal to negative 4. And those values can be excluded from the domain of the composite function. So multiply both sides of the equation by the denominator. You have 4 cannot be equal to negative 4 times the denominator, x minus 2 in parentheses, is not equal to negative 4x plus 8 after you distribute the negative 4 through the set of parentheses. So if you solve this equation for x and get x by itself on one side, you'll have negative 4x is equal to negative 4, and so that means that x cannot be equal to 1. So that means if I plug in x equals 1, I will find out g of 1, but then I can't find out f of g of 1. So that means the original x equals 1 needs to be excluded from the domain. So what that means is that I need to exclude x equals 2, and I also need to exclude x equals 1 from the domain of the composite function. Those don't produce y values in the composite function. So if you want to write the domain of the composite function using interval notation, it would be the set of all real numbers except for x equals 1 and also x equals 2. So negative infinity to 1, union 1 to 2, union 2 to infinity. So let's try number 2. Number 2 says we're going to find out the composite function g composed with f of x and also its domain. 
So again, if you reverse the order of the functions, this time g is the outside function and f is the inside function. So g composed with f is g of f of x. So f of x is the inside function. It will be substituted into the outside function g. And so f of x was the function 1 divided by x plus 4 that was given in the problem. You have 1 divided by x plus 4 that needs to be substituted into the function g of x to find the composite function. So g of x was 4 divided by x minus 2. So it would be 4 divided by input value instead of an x. So 1 divided by x plus 4 is what we're inputting into the function g. And then subtract 2 in the denominator. So again, we need to simplify this function by getting common denominators in the denominator of this larger fraction. So notice that the LCD is x plus 4. And the negative 2 is missing the x plus 4 in the denominator. So multiply the negative 2 by x plus 4 divided by x plus 4. And so you'll have a little bit to simplify. You have 4 in the numerator divided by 1 subtract 2 times x plus 4 because x plus 4 was missing in the denominator. And then it's all divided by the LCD, x plus 4. So if you simplify in the denominator of this larger fraction, you'll have 4 divided by 1 minus, distribute the negative 2 through the set of parentheses, you'll have 1 subtract negative 2x minus 8, and it's all divided by the LCD, x plus 4. And then combine like terms, you'll have 4 divided by negative 2x, subtract 7, all divided by x plus 4. And so again, we have two fractions that are being divided by one another. You have 4 divided by 1 is one fraction, and the other fraction is negative 2x minus 7 divided by x plus 4. So multiply by the reciprocal. So you have 4 divided by 1, keep that fraction the same, but then multiply by the reciprocal of the fraction that's in the denominator of this larger fraction. So x plus 4 is now the numerator, and negative 2x minus 7 is now the denominator. So now multiply straight across because you're multiplying fractions. You do not need a common denominator when you multiply. So 4 times x plus 4 will keep it factored form, and then the denominator is negative 2x minus 7. So this is the composite function. This is completely simplified because there are no common factors in the numerator or denominator. And so this is the function g composed with f, where g is the outside function and f of x is the inside function. So now let's find out what is the domain of this composite function. Because this composite function is different from the one we found earlier, its domain is likely also to be different. So again, there are two steps to find out the, the domain of the composite function. You want to find the domain of the inside function first. So the domain of f of x was the inside function. We found out earlier that f of x, you have the denominator was x plus 4. It cannot be 0. So the domain of f of x is negative infinity to negative 4 and negative 4 to infinity. That means x cannot be negative 4 because f of x will be undefined. The inside function f of x will not even exist whenever x is equal to negative 4. So x equals negative 4 needs to be excluded from the composite function's domain. So now step 2. You need to find the domain of the outside function, which in this case was g of x. Well, g of x was undefined whenever x was 2 because you had x minus 2 in the denominator. Well, we're not throwing x equals 2 out. We're throwing out the x values that make the inside function equal to 2. Because if we find out any x values that give us a y value that is 2, those y values cannot be plugged into the outside function, which was g of x. So let's find out what are the x values where f of x is equal to 2. So f of x was 1 divided by x plus 4. It cannot be equal to 2. Multiply both sides of the equation by the denominator. So you'll have 1 cannot be equal to 2 times x plus 4. Distribute to remove the parentheses. So you have 2 times x plus 8 on one side of the equation. And on the other side, you'll have 1. So 2x plus 8 cannot be equal to 1. And if you solve this equation, for x, you'll find out that x cannot be negative 7 divided by 2. What that means is that if you substitute in x equals negative 7 divided by 2, you'll find a y value, but then that y value will not produce a new y value for the outside function or the composite function as a whole. And so the domain of g of f, we know that we have to exclude x equals negative 4, and we also have to exclude x equals negative 7 halves. So the domain using interval notation, negative 4 comes first on the number line because negative 4 is less than negative 7 halves. So negative infinity to negative 4. Union, negative 4 to negative 7 halves, and then also union, negative 7 halves to infinity. The set of all real numbers except x equals negative 4 and x equals negative 7 halves. So, so far, we've used composition to build more complicated functions, where we actually have f composed with g, where g of x is the inside function and f is the outside function, or we had g composed with f, where g is the outside function and f is the inside function. Well, how do you actually go backwards? In calculus, you actually need to do this quite often. How do you actually decompose a complicated function into simpler functions? 
where you can identify the inside function and you can identify the outside function. So that's what we're going to do in example four. So example four, we're going to decompose a complicated function into two simpler functions. So find two functions, f of x and g of x, such that h of x is this function, the composite function, f composed with g, so f is the outside function and g is the inside function if it's written as f composed with g, and h of x is the fourth root of x squared plus nine. So this is a very complicated function. You have a function inside the fourth root of x, which is also a function. So let's find out what is the inside and the outside functions before you did composition to get this h of x. Well, if you notice from the composite function h of x, it looks like there's a function inside the fourth root. It looks like x squared plus nine could be the inside function and the fourth root could be the outside function. So let's call the inside function g of x, that's x squared plus nine, and then what are we plugging x squared plus nine into the outside function as? Well, f of x would have to be the fourth root of x because x squared plus nine is going to be plugged into this x. And so yeah, we do get the fourth root of x squared plus nine if g of x is the inside function, x squared plus nine, and f of x is the fourth root of x is the outside function. Now keep in mind, when you decompose complicated functions into simpler functions, the answers are not unique. In other words, you can find multiple answers for the inside function and the outside function that actually will work. So this is just one possibility for the decomposition of the function h of x. So let's finish up this video talking about applications of composition. So when you're working with functions that model real world situations, often we name variables using letters that suggest the quantity that they're actually being modeled. So like if you're talking about temperature, you would probably want to use capital T. If you're talking about distance, you might want to use D. Or if you're talking about time, you might want to use lowercase t, and so on. If you want to combine these two functions, you can actually form new functions called composite functions. So let's look at example five. We're going to talk about how to find a function that represents area of a ripple in a pond. So let's say you have a stone that's thrown into a pond, creating a circular ripple, and the circular ripple spreads over the pond in such a way that the radius is increasing at a rate of 5.3 feet per second, find the composite function, or composition of functions, a of t, that gives the area of the ripple, the circular ripple, in terms of time. So since the ripple is actually getting larger over time, the radius of the ripple, the circular ripple, is actually getting larger with time, the area of the ripple will also increase over time. So let's find out what is this composite function. So there are a couple steps on this. Part one, express the radius r of the circular ripple in terms of time. Because the radius is increasing with time, we need to find out what is that function. So notice that you have a constant rate of change. The radius is increasing at 5.3 feet per second. And so the radius is a linear function. R of t would be 5.3 times t. The radius of the circular ripple is zero feet whenever their time is equal to zero. Okay, part two. Now let's express the other function, which we're actually interested in finding, the area of the circular ripple. So part two is express the area A of the circular ripple in terms of the radius. So the shape that we're actually talking about is a circular ripple. So we're talking about the area of a circle. Well, if we know the radius of the circle, then we can calculate its area using the familiar formula of A is equal to pi r squared. So a is a function, that's the function that's determined by the radius, so a of r is equal to pi times radius squared. And so notice that this is actually a quadratic function because the variable is r, that's the input variable. And r is actually the radius of the circular ripple, which is measured in feet. Now part three, find the composite function, the original function that's given in the problem, it is actually formed this way, a composed with r, of t. So a is the outside function and r of t is the inside function. That actually will calculate the area of the ripple where t, the time, is the input variable. So the composite function, we know how to form these. a composed with r of t is a of r of t. r of t is the inside function. So r of t, we know from part one was 5.3 times t, the linear function. So this is a of 5.3t, so you're plugging 5.3t into the outside function a. Well, the function a was pi times input variable squared. And so it will be pi times 5.3t all squared. And so if you simplify this function, you'll have 28.09, let's keep pi in the answer, and then you'll have t squared. So 5.3 squared gives you 28.09, keep the pi, and then also t is being squared, so t squared. So this is a new function. 
This will actually calculate the area of the circular ripple if you have the time only. You don't need to know what the radius of the circular ripple is. As long as you have the time, now you can just calculate the area directly. You don't actually have to calculate it using two functions. You have one function now, just the composite function. So t is the number of seconds, and a will calculate the area of the circular ripple, which will be in square feet, or feet squared. So this finishes our video on how to find the composition of two functions and also its domain. We also talked about how to decompose a composite function into simpler functions, and we also talked about an application involving composite functions. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know this as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about one-to-one -one functions and their inverses.